So we've been talking to various people around the country who were involved in uh, Gaelic games and uh, I'll give you some of the anonymous stuff that we got uh, back from them in a minute. But um, former county golf footballer Evan McGee is with us to give us his experience. Evan, good morning to you. How are you doing? Morning, Ger. How are you? Yeah, good. Morning, all. We were we were definitely taken aback yesterday when we, we found out that it was Meldonium because um, it's difficult to get your hands on Meldonium in Ireland. Anyway, um, in terms of the level of education, when you were playing, how much did you have to sit through? How much how much work did you have to do to make sure that you were on top of what was on the band list and what wasn't? Uh, we wouldn't have done much work now, Jared. Uh, to be honest with you. You know, we, we put our faith in the medical staff and the SNC uh, coaches and, and fairness, they were pretty on the ball. We were blessed with a good medical staff and anything that could come in, we, we took was very well checked. And anything you took outside of that, you had to run by the dock. So, you know, in terms of literature, in terms of sitting down and talking, this is what you can take, this is what you can't take. We it wouldn't have been you know a priority for us. We just put an awful lot of trust in Docs and uh, the S and C lads. And look, that that kind of is obviously a system that, that worked quite well up to. Well, it it seems to work very well for the best for the the best run counties where you have a medical staff. There's a proper relationship with all the medical staff, and and they had those conversations. Mm-hmm. Were you guys taking supplements like a, as a group? Was it a a, a group wide kind of? these are the supplements that we take and everybody has to take them or was it tailored for individuals? Some people needed supplements depending on how they were training. How, how did that work? You see, what it was, you know, there, there was obviously lads that when, when Jim came in initially, there was lads that would have needed to bulk up a wee bit. And, you know, there's a famous story about Rory Cavanagh taking the six dinners a day. But there's also, you know, Rory would have been, you know, a lot of protein shakes. Um, you know, after training the team, as a squad would have had their re- recovery drinks. And I'd say majority of counties that can afford it are doing that at a minute. But, you know, in terms of taking the supplements, I think they came in in 2014, you know, coming to the end of my career. Um, but personally, I was never one for that, but I know a lot of lads would have uh, be, been on that kind of stuff. And again, it would have been rigorously checked by the the medical staff. So there was a, a centrally recognised kind of, if anybody is taking supplements, these are the ones that we're taking and this is the brand and it would have to be batch tested, all that kind of stuff that would just be... A- that, that, that's correct, but but I also know that, you know, myself included in 2012, I went off, one of the, one of the friends got me a batch of creatine and, you know, I didn't run about that by anybody, so it wasn't checked and I know a few of the lads were on, were on the same boat, so... It was just pure pure luck of the draw, and in terms of the the testing itself, you know, the the chances of you getting tested were were, were very low. Did how many times did you get tested during your intercounty career? Never, never to my uh, recollection. You know, um, no, I, I, I didn't I didn't get tested on that. Um, you know, again, that that's the thing about it that the odds of you getting tested are are low enough. You know, so if you are if that particular mindset that you want to kind of cheat the system, you, you would nearly mm. take a chance now. Tell me, when you were taking creatine in 2012, why did you take it and how did you get it? I got it, uh, one of the lads who's very well versed in, you know, sports science affairs and he sat me down and he sent me an article on creatine and the benefits of it and, you know, I would have had a few worries about is there is there kind of negatives to it and is this is this dangerous or anything and he, he sat me down and he says no no way there's so much positives and there's so many uh, benefits to your game here that you know you're, you'd be crazy not to take it so you know he he managed to help me up with a batch of the stuff and you know i was i was happy enough to take it and i don't know was it psychological or, or was it you know an actual physical benefit of it but it, but i thought it, it was it was good stuff you know Right, and uh, is that is that just a powder that you mix into a drink and take it in a shaker? Yeah, yeah. So what what you do with the the creatine is that you would load it up, load up on it first for the first week or so, and then you would you know gradually you know two, two to three times a day then for a few weeks. 
And how long did you feel the benefits of creatine after that? Was it? It's about building muscle, is that right, or as opposed to endurance? It's, it's about it's about building muscle. If you if you're going to ask me the ins and outs of it now, that basically the cell was this is going to improve your game. You're going to feel stronger. You're going to be faster. And for me, it wasn't about the strength. It was about the the faster part of it. And uh, this is. He sold this package to me, and I was like, "Yeah, sign me up to it now." And you know, obviously, I did ask. Like, this is all above board, and he says, "This is checked. This is this is no no bother at all." But the the protocol was: would you go to your backroom team, uh, the medical staff, or the S and C lads, and say, "Listen, I'm taking this. Uh, can you get it checked out for me?" Uh, but but I kind of never never really bothered with that. Why not? As a matter of interest, was it, did like were you did was that a little kind of wrinkle in the back of your mind going? I should get this checked out with the lads, but actually, you know what? I'm not going to bother. Why didn't you? Uh, hassle, hassle, Jerry. You know what? What happens if they were to tell me, say, you know, I I I taken it two two weeks into it, and I says, you know, maybe I should go and see the the backroom team about it. But um, you know, it, there was no the conscience wasn't at me or anything. I knew the thing was okay, and I knew it was you know I trusted the man's. Uh, man's advice and his opinion but it's, it was just hassle it, there was no other other reason for it yeah okay well so not to not to to focus on the specifics of the current case or, or any other case but mm. you can see how if there was somebody on a GA team who had an idea and it wasn't necessarily creatine it was something else how a trusted person on the team could suddenly become a conduit for a, a bunch of other people to be taking stuff yeah, yeah, de definitely. I can uh, understand that how how that happens. You know, when you, you go back to my my earlier example about the creatine, you know, it could have been a bad batch. You know, it could have, small chance it could have been a bad batch, and you know, I I could have gave that then to other members of the squad, uh, and they could have got unlucky and they could have got tested, and you know, there would have been consequences to that. But I, I definitely can, I definitely agree with what you're saying here in terms of. You know th that one person can bring in what whatever. It seems as if they've kind of ramped up a little bit the the actual amount of um, expectation on players to to take a bit of personal responsibility for this. Now I don't know how much ramping up they've done. So I, I, we had uh, one of the lads ring around various people, and this was all under condition of anonymity. But we heard back from three current intercounty players last night, three separate counties at different levels, and all three of them said that they had to do an online webinar or a quiz at the start of the year. Um, and a couple more from uh, some recently retired former players. A one-off presentation with the usual advice, check everything with your doctor before taking anything. Uh, more of a tick-the-box exercise, no real emphasis put on it in my opinion, but in fairness the information given was clear. Another one said a couple of talks over the years and we were told to run everything by the medical team, so you put all your trust in them. And then one meeting a year, totally inadequate considering teams have totally different levels of resources around medical staff, nutritionists, etc. So you've got a good medical team. You could have gone and checked whatever you wanted with them. There are definitely yeah. counties who probably don't have the access to the same amount of backroom teams, but there is this online webinar. Um, if you were playing today, Eamon, and I know it's a, it's a hypothetical situation, but you're sent a link by WhatsApp saying, here, fill this, go and do this test. It's going to take you half an hour. It'll give you the details on... Uh, what you can and can't take. We have to trust the players are doing that, or should there be some kind of system where you're not allowed to play until it's proven that you've taken this half-hour test? Uh, uh, I, like, county players have a lot on their on their plate. You know, um, if if the cell is right in terms of if if you if you trust your doctors and you have a good relationship with the medical staff, which which we did. And he and I, if he was to tell me take this quiz or take this questionnaire, then you, you're going to do it. Um, but you know, take it's it's just a lot of a lot of hassle, you know, in, in my opinion. And maybe not necessarily that much of a deterrent either. It's um, like a, I guess the whole point about having a drugs testing regime is to deter people from taking drugs. Um, and I, I just don't know how, I don't know how it works, right? I, I don't know how in practice, if I'm, uh, if I'm inclined to look for an advantage and if I'm inclined to look for some way of cheating the system, I don't know how much this half hour, I, I suppose it makes me responsible if I do get caught. And maybe that's the only, that's the way that that works. I, I'm... Yeah, and I, I think this is a big one. You know, players have to 
have a level of responsibility. It's primarily on the players. It'll be on the medical staff and you know the SNC coaches, but secondary, but primarily it's going to be on the player. They they have to make sure that they're taking their taking the right stuff. And you know, Maladonium there's this question mark over that straight away for, for you as a county player and for you being involved in, in in any sport that's going to be drug tested. So, you know, that's going to put alarm bells off straight away. So you have you have to ask the question, should should I be taking this? Yeah, Eamon, just to go back to the whole process of testing. So you were never tested during your inter-county career. Did you see testing happen? Did you see teammates getting pulled aside after games to be tested? Yeah, I seen. I think there was an uh, example in the All Ireland final 2012. You know, we were all in cloud nine, and Christy Toy was pulled aside, and you know he couldn't make the bus to the hotel, and you know we we were obviously fairly annoyed about it now. But it would most of the Crow Park games there would have been someone uh, pulled aside and tested, and you know you weren't allowed to to leave until you produced a sample and. And um, that that's fair enough. I I have no wild complaints about it. You know, we're we're taking the government grants. The county players are taking the government grants, and uh, we 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 expect a certain level of responsibility on on the players. Then. And then what about out of competition? Because obviously this case with the the Carlo footballer was out of competition testing. Was was there ever anybody who visited Donegal training, or did anybody get tested after a training session? There was. I think off the top of my head, there would be three or four times that right. players would be tested at training. They would have landed up at training. Um, and just wait. Again, training session was completed. You waited for the to produce a sample after the training. And there was fairly fairly run of the mill. I don't think the majority of the lads had any, any wide problem with it. Mm-hmm. But it, again, it was rare. And if you were tempted to go down that route, you, you would take a chance and... Uh, with the odds that are there that you're going to be tested. Was this a topic of discussion amongst inter-county players about the subject of doping? It's a, it's a fairly big subject in terms of the wider realms of sport. You'd have all been reading sports media where there are international stories doing the rounds. As athletes yourself, I'm sure there would have been discussions about, God, I wonder, is our, our, our competitors, for example, indulging in things? Obviously, pure idle speculation, but yeah. I'm, I'm sure it might have been in your mind. Yeah, definitely, you know, and as the as the years went on, as things got more seriously with the supplements and, you know, the the recovery powder and you're you're thinking and you're having these these debates and, you know, a lot of county squads will have these big f- philosophical discussions, you know, to pass the time and the in the night in the nights away and we were mm-hmm. saying where where's the line? Um where does the line stop and you know what? What? Who decides what's good and what's bad? Um, because the supplements would have been fairly popular amongst the squad, and, and every county squad's the same. Um, the recovery, the recovery drinks after training were were mandatory. You know, it was frowned if you if you didn't take any, and you know that that there is a benefit. And, you know, you're receiving a head start. So you know. The, the light, we, we discussed about we chatted about where where is that line in terms of what 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 is cheating and when are you on your own if that makes sense mm. and and did you come up to with, with an answer for that philosophical question was it as simple as whatever's on the band list uh represents no any, any good uh, philosophical discussion there there is no there is no answer <laughs> at the end of it now what did you think though i i stopped taken the creatine in, in 2013 and I haven't taken it since so may, maybe I, I did answer that question you know I, I just you know I had a few discussions with with myself and with with the friend who recommended it and, and you know it would have been brought into the club in this last few years and, and I would have st- stayed away from it now but I, I understand and I have no bother at all with people taking the stuff but you know that there is a part of it that is that is not you. You're you're still getting that help in hand. You're still you're still um, and maybe that's naive. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a wee bit naive on my part. But they're still um, they're still getting a head start on someone who doesn't have that creating. 
it kind of feels like it's a little bit of a, a you know, it, it's, it's a slippery slope, essentially. If I take creatine today, there's a possibility that actually, well, what's the difference between this? So this isn't on the band list, but I actually feel much better taking it. The stuff that's on the band list must be supercharging me. Maybe I could take a little bit of that and see how it goes, like particularly in the off season when I know there's no chance of getting tested. Like, uh, is, is that part of the philosophical question that or debate that kind of comes to the fore? Or? Yeah, it's definitely. And we, we, we laughed, you know, we, we had this discussion. We laughed as for the lads that were at the, the wrong end of her career. You know, we says we could possibly squeeze a few more years out of her career if, if we went down, if we went down this route. Um, but 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 again, it's it's something that I don't think many would have taken seriously. But you know, it it is it is that road that you can go down because there there is a small chance of you getting tested. So you can see why people do it. I can understand a hundred percent why people do it. Um, you know, I can't I can't understand. Why, why, why a Carlo footballer is taking melodonium and, you know, worrying about that. But I, but I can see why the successful counties, the chance, the, the counties that are in with a real chance are, would be, would be taking it for that. Because there's not that much of a percentage uh, in terms of the gap between the Dublin and the Kerry and Tyrone and, and these boys. So I can, I can understand why someone might be tempted to take it to make up them, make up that wee gap. Yeah, look, it's a, it's obviously not a topic that's got to go any uh, away anytime soon. But um, uh, that was always it's always great to talk to you, I Amy. Mean, but that was really interesting, just the fact that these conversations are happening at um, between squads and those long dark nights away where you're uh, trying to recover and the box sets aren't that good. No, well, this was probably pre Netflix before Netflix was a big thing now. So um, hopefully, then discussions are still happening because they're they're always. Uh, they're always fruitful. Good stuff, Eamon. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Thanks, boys.